So what'd you miss at Jubilee today? Well, you missed Transfiguration Sunday. You know, dazzling, bright, and changing, and going up mountains, and Elijah, and Moses, and Jesus, and all that stuff. It, this, is, this is Transfiguration Sunday. This is the Sunday before we get into to the introspection and uh, the no hallelujahs of, of Lent. And this is the, the Sunday that precedes Pancake Tuesday. Um, get shriven. Um, so this is meant to be a celebration, and yet it's also a story that's tough on modern minds. Um, so today we, we, we wondered about that a little bit. We, 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 we listened to the story. Um, scripture invites us to compare it to Moses going up the mountain, and, and, and we did that. We heard the story, and then, um, and then our music director, Daniel, uh, and I um, revisited it. Daniel playing sax and me just playing with the words of the text, and we bounced them back and forth, creating a feeling, an atmosphere that, 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 that seemed to reach a number of people, which is great. I've got some people who had no idea what the heck we were doing, but, but the idea of trying to get beyond just the rational reasonableness of the story and let it land. And so we did that. And we read from Second Peter, Peter's letter, dated fairly reliably to about 65 common era. And, and, and so in that letter, he, he says, you know, this, these aren't things that we're making up. I saw it happen. And that's important, I think, because obviously he's answering critics. So people then were also going, this is crazy talk. What do you, like these stories are fanciful, must be made up. And Peter's saying, no, we don't make this stuff up. And I was there, I saw it. And so then we are forced to wonder ourselves. And what did, what did he see? What is he talking about? What does this mean? And what does this mean to us that that two thousand years later we're still talking about it? What does it matter to us that Jesus? was dazzling and, and, and bright, or, or that a cloud descended and the voice of God said, this is my son. I mean, yeah, we can say, see, we win, but it doesn't really mean anything, does it, in, in our day-to-day -day lives? So today we wondered a little bit about transfiguration, transformation. What, what does it mean when something changes? And does that really happen in the real world? I talked about how we meet people and we're pretty sure we know who they are. And then as we get to know them, if we dare to open ourselves up, they become, well, different people. They're transformed as we learn about their lives and understand a little bit about them. And sometimes that's in big ways and sometimes that's in little ways. I talked a little bit about how we change ourselves too. We're sure of one thing and then our opinions change. Our minds are changed. We, some of us mellow and we become almost like different people. Transfiguration, transformation, change actually is possible. We tend to carry on as if it's not. That, that, you know, once you've revealed yourself, you will always be who you've revealed yourself to be. But this story begs us to imagine that perhaps that's not true. And I think our reflected experience tells us that real change is possible. So the question is, what happened on the mountain? Did Jesus change or did Peter, James, and John change? Did they see Jesus in a new way, in such a way that they could never see him the old way again? I think that's something that we can understand. And I think many of us have had moments in faith, moments in life, where we've suddenly seen something anew and we can never see it the old way again. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing, but it's a real thing. I think Peter's describing a real thing. The other thing we wondered about is why then were they afraid? It says in the text very clearly they were afraid and Jesus tells them not to be afraid. But here's the thing. I think sometimes when we see the world in a new way, when we see people in a new way, we, when we imagine God's presence in our lives, in the lives of strangers, in the lives of friends and enemies, we can't live the way we've always done it. We can't not be changed ourselves. And that's what scares us. It's not that Jesus changed. It's that we change. 
That's the scary part. That's the blessing. I think that's the essence of the story. At least that's what we talked about today at Jubilee. And we heard great music. And Cheryl Colford led some wonderful prayers. And, 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 and we missed you. So hopefully we'll get to see you soon, that you'll be with us. And your being with us will transform us, transform you perhaps, and we'll never be able to look at each other exactly the same way again, but we will see God's presence in each other. Wouldn't that be amazing? Until we do get to see you, God bless.